Hey guys, now in this video, let's discuss bindings in Azure functions. So what is binding? So binding, it is a declarative way to connect our function to Azure resources such as storage, queue, database, etc. But then why we may need to connect our Azure function to Azure resources, right? So we may need to connect so that we can either read data from these resources or we can write data to these resources. Now guys, you may have a question that can't we write our explicit manual code for this? So yes, of course. But with binding, it makes our code crisp and short and we don't need to write that boilerplate code. So guys, boilerplate code, that means that common repetitive code to open a connection to write data or to read data and to close connection etc. So we have two types of binding that is input binding and output binding. Input binding that means data coming in from Azure resources in Azure function and output binding that means data getting pushed to Azure resource from Azure function. I guess easy to understand. And now in this video, let's see a simple demo of output binding where let's say a user post feedback via HTTP post API. So you can guess it will be our HTTP trigger and then we will read this feedback contents and we will store it in blob as output binding. And then in our next video, let's discuss the scenario when we cannot use output binding and we have to explicitly write our code to write the contents to this blob. See so guys, here we will be writing the contents to this blob using output binding, right? But then there might be scenarios where we cannot use such type of output binding, but we have to write our explicit code to write the contents to blob. So guys, we are in Visual Studio. Let's say create a new project. I'll select Azure functions. Next, let's give name. So I will say output binding demo. Next, let's keep it HTTP trigger. I will say create. Now guys, first thing, I will share this code on GitHub. Okay, now let's go down. And guys, can you see this function name? That is function one. So first, let's make it more meaningful. So I will say submit feedback. Now guys, we have to install one NuGet package. So right click on this project, NuGet packages, let's search and let's install this package. So let's install, accept. Now guys, obviously this will be our post method. So let's get rid of get. Also here HTTP request, I will make it HTTP request data and obviously we have to fix it. So let's install this and one more change over here. So here I will make it async and so I will say now guys we are on .NET 8 and we are using isolated version. Now earlier you could simply inject this blob output binding right in this run method. Okay, so similar to this HTTP trigger, we could inject blob output. But here now we have to create a separate class. We have to create a related property and that property will declare as blob output. So I know guys, you might be confusing. So let's actually see it. So I will simply paste this class. So guys, if you see, this is simple straightforward class and basically this property that is output data, it will contain the contents which are posted through that post API and which we want to write in blob. So this property we have to declare as blob output. That is, this will be our output binding. Okay. So again, I will share this code on GitHub. So here I will say blob output. And to this, obviously, we have to provide the path, comma, and connection. 
so first thing connection let's get it from local settings so let's copy this that is azure web job storage and the path of our blob it will be feedback slash random git see guys this random git it will be dynamically generated for each response we receive and then this feedback it is a container let me just show you so guys this is our storage account and then we have this feedback container right and guys now here we need to provide the connection string for our storage account right so let's get it so here let's go down security access keys let's view connection string let's let's copy this connection string and let's paste it over here let's go to function1.cs and now guys see this http request data it will contain the actual feedback contents posted by the user right so we need to read that we need to convert it into string and then we need to write it in this blob so i will simply remove this code over here so here i will say we are feedback contents is equal to i will say request dot read as string async and now i will say string blob contents is equal to feedback received at and then we'll add the date and time and here i'll say feedback contents so now basically this will be our blob contents and now to write this contents in blob i will say return new submit feedback response output data is equal to blob contents and then this http response and now here obviously our return type it will be submit feedback response see guys basically here we are returning this submit feedback response right and here inside it we have this blob output trigger so that means this instance of submit feedback response it will not be actually returned to the caller but instead internally this will write this contents that is this output data contents in this blob let's actually see it so let's run our project and now let's copy this post api url and let's call it from postman so i will paste it over here and here i will click on this body i will say raw and here i will say i want to pass text content in the body of this post api and here i will say now guys before we click on send let's add a debugger so let's simply add a debugger over here and here i will say send ah uh, it says 404 yeah it's our actually post call right so let's select post and let's say send again yes the debugger has been hit and let's say continue and see it says 200 okay and now let's cross check in azure portal so let's open our feedback container and yes we can see newly created file so let's open it I'll say download and yes the feedback contents are written in blog so that's it guys thanks thanks for listening